I'm Danielle. Let's talk about sex. With your host, Cecilia Gentili. When I talk about like my experience with sex work, sometimes it's a lot of like choice. I chose to do it and a lot was about circumstances. How was how did you start engaging in, in, in exchanging sex for money or whatever you exchange it for? Whatever you do. Um I was dating someone and for me it was more of a choice, I think in that moment I was having it was a, a situation where I could or didn't have to, but I felt like I was kind of an insecure person who was really like in this kind of like really tight knit relationship where I felt like my body like belonged to this person and I wanted to like reclaim a sense of like dignity or like oneness with being like separate from the gaze of my partner, I guess. So I, like, yeah. Well, he eventually started drinking with me anyway, so it was fine. So you're both now yeah. engaged, yes. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it was just that kind of thing. Yeah. It was like from my own, to like figure out my own life, separate from like this monogamous relationship, I guess. Yeah. I was in college full time, um, I was working two and a half jobs. And then my doctor was just like, you're really stressed. So you need to like stop. But I'm Capricorn, I love that money. <laughs> and so one of my girlfriends was like, hey, let's, you know, let's start phone sex. And from phone sex became clients that were like, hey, I want to see you in person. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, well. Here's five hundred dollars for a half hour. I sure the hell do want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and then it became a thing. I didn't do it often, but it was you know, once you get to taste that fast money, sometimes it was my drug of choice. Yeah. It was something I didn't want to let go. A very like wealthy older man was like, "Do you want to go to Miami and like go to the opera?" And like I w I'd never been to the opera, but I was like, "You know what? We're gonna try this. We're gonna try the opera." And I did, and I liked it so much, I went all the way to New York City, and I was like, time to upgrade. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But like natural, right? Oh, like yeah. Because yeah. I already love myself, and I love sharing that sense of self with other people, so they find their sense of self. I love that. I love that. How was your beginning in this idea? Um, honestly, it was very circumstantial. After I thought I had graduated high school, like the end of that summer, my mom ended up kicking me out and a lot of situations I kind of just ended up in um, I think just because of like what I was going through like funny enough like it was like also my first time on HRT which just like puts your <laughs> sexuality and just like truthfully lustful urges and like a, a high drive and it was putting me in a position where I was like meeting a lot of older men like off of these apps and shit and then just like progress to the point where like people were wanting to like give me certain things if I was giving them certain things and um at first it was like not a game I was catching on to like off rip but it was just like something that was happening with like a consistent person and I just was like well if I can like finesse this and like you know what I'm saying break you off something and like get what I want from it while I'm like just like homeless and hungry, hungry, rambling through the city, I'm like, I might as well just like build a habit out of this and like now like cater these same things to multiple people. It reminds me a lot of my experience because I was like, you know, all these dudes wanna have sex with me and I need to pay rent. There can only be one of them. So yeah, mm -hmm. so, so you know, let's, okay, I'll have sex with you if you help me pay rent and hey, Rent has been paid since the <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> how did you start engaging in, uh, in, the, in the sex work industry? I started, the work I was doing when I started was online. Um, I think it's kind of hard to separate circumstance from choice. Yeah. Because, like, I think it's kind of just chaotic circumstances that get us across the threshold of like considering sex work or considering that it's a possibility like a lot of us i think start with one thing and maybe it's not for us but then it it sparks other ideas it gets the ball rolling so you know you may start with a circumstance but then your choice to actually stick with it i think is a ch more of a choice and the way that you your business progresses you know like hopefully you you get to a point where 
you're making more autonomous decisions about the work you do, um, your boundaries and expectations. Hopefully your rate goes up, your clients get better, and that, you know, you, you, you hope for that kind of trajectory. Once you get that taste of like, you described it as fast money and that's like a thing in itself, like that's enough, but then there's also the feeling of realizing that you're indispensable, that you're not being paid for sexual attention or sex or, you know, whatever, but it's because it's coming from you. You know that another girl is not gonna get your clients because they're not offering the same thing as you. It's not like being an employee where you can be replaced. So once, like I wouldn't call sex work empowering in like a feminist anti-capitalist sense because like we're laborers, but once you realize that people will pay because you're you, yeah. not because yeah. you're hot, not because you're willing to spend time with them, that's, yeah. that's when it becomes like a choice and I'm like, oh, I can do anything I want with this. As a trans woman, like, in one side, like all these people, even my family were telling me like, you know, you're not worth it. You are an abomination. You know, you are, you are shit, right? On one side and another side, it was all these dudes paying to be with me because mm -hmm. I was trans and because I was who I was and because I was entertaining. So it was like, oh, yeah, I can do this, right? I can do yeah, this. You're like, you're right. Like, yeah. I am the shit. Yeah. And secure myself with this like sense of like, you know, worthiness that, that I needed so much. I don't think if I even have survived, not only in a financial way, but in a in an emotional way, I was in a very bad point and sex work kind of like helped me feel better about myself and, and what I was doing. And I made good coins, and I got to get all the, the books that I wanted and change them as much as I want them. What is enjoyable for you of your work? Um, I think like jumping off from the last point that were made, what was really, what is enjoyable to me on a day-to-day -day basis is feeling self-sufficient and not feeling like kind of that stress that you might get from working in a corporate position or like working a day job where you feel like everything is in someone else's hands when you like reclaim making money and like not having to like struggle financially especially when coming from a place where you or I personally struggle financially like most of like my young adult life and feeling like financially independent made me feel a lot more mentally healthy you know and knowing that that's coming from a place with where I'm in tune with my body was like really gratifying so that's what I enjoy with my work and I love men, so that's that. I'm like, you know, I love yeah. men, so I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's like, I don't know. And you get them, and yeah. they you. It's always a good experience. I like getting to know new people on my own terms and like kind of having the control in the room feels good. It feels safe. It's a boundary for me. Um, so I think that's what I enjoy is like new energy and specifically energy that is catered towards me. Yeah. So it's like all about me. I love that. What I enjoy the most probably is just getting paid at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you dance. You dance too. That's yeah, sex I work. Do. Dancing is sex work too. Oh yeah. Um, that's fun. I do go-go dance. I can like completely forgot about that. Um, that's a new trade actually. But it's really fun. I enjoy that. Um, I like selling the fantasies and just like um, feeding off of people's energy. It's really nice. I think independent sex work, especially like when you're not working at a club or for a house or for someone else. Um, it's really great for people who have disabilities or, um, you know, mental illness or chronic illness, anything where you really need to control your own schedule and you need to say, I'm not working today or this week or this month, or all of a sudden I feel like I can work or I need to draw my boundaries and choose exactly who I deal with. Um, I think that's why and, and there's so much of that in the queer community and also the self-awareness of all those needs that we have. So um, I love I love that I can take care of myself by, by um, like governing my own labor. I feel like I can't do a lot of work. Maybe I am good at a lot of types of work, but the part of it that requires me to follow someone else's schedule and to push myself beyond my comfort, beyond my capability yeah. is, is not good. We can imagine the world we want to live in, in which I'm a princess, whatever, or just your utopia, and then you can live in it during the session. You can create that world that you want to live in, just for a minute. And that's refreshing to me. 
How did sex work play a role in your well-being, uh, on your mental health or in your health in general? I have what I like to call the holy trinity of mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Damn. I'm just a happy-go-lucky girl. Yes. And there's nothing better, and this is speaking from my perspective, then sometimes, you know, I wake up, maybe feel a little dysphoric, and I'll go outside, when I had a dog, and I'd walk my dog, and some guy just be like, damn, you've got some nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you do, by the way. Thank you. So which I'm just like, thanks. It's 250. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get that 250. And so it validates that, you know what, I woke up feeling like shit, but someone appreciates it. I just got back into sex work after doing social work and I felt empowered to do sex work again. And I thought about it, I was just like, why am I fucking you for free? If I find you hot and you're gonna pay me, why would I not take it? Yeah, I love that. So I said, oh, amen. Yeah, people are asking for more. Right. So that makes me feel better, and that, that, that validates me, and that makes my mental health feel better. Yeah, yeah. Danielle, mm. has um, sex work play a role in your overall well-being, or in your mental health? Um... I've definitely traveled more, sort of become more well-rounded, less insulated, because um, I think it, no matter who you are, everyone's got their bubble, even in sex work. You yeah. just, you feel like I can only do this one thing, um, but you know, I've done sugar baby stuff. I've done like phone sex. I did go-go dancing in clubs. Like, so I, I've tried a little bit of everything and I think that kind of builds you to be like more well-rounded. Yeah, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Kathy mentioned that uh, sex work is something that is good for your mental health because you have a lot of autonomy, right? Yeah. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, and I'm still thinking about when we're talking about circumstances. I feel like this is one of the only industries where people ask you, do you want to do that? Does it make you happy? Like, do, do, did you choose to do that? Like, we don't say that to children of immigrants who have to become lawyers and doctors. Yeah. You know, we're not like, oh, you didn't, did somebody make you do that? Do you want to be? Like nobody wants to be working their jobs the way that they currently are set up. Yeah. And I think that if we had the context that we're all describing um, applied to other industries, like like I have a friend who's an academic, she's a scientist, she publish, publishes research, and it's all about like grants and politics. If she had people in her inbox who were like, I'll give you $1,000 for your research. And someone else is like, I'll give you $2,000, please give us the re that would, I feel like she would feel the same way about her work as I do about sex work. Yeah. Like if we had any, if we're making art, if you're producing like whatever you're doing, if you have people like bidding for you and telling you that you're worth more than you're saying you're worth, instead of competing with other people, I think that's so good for your health. Cause so much of what we're taught is that we're not worth shit and that we're gonna be replaced and that there's always somebody who's better and you know, cheaper than us, so. Plus, like when you were saying that, you remind me, like, you know, um, it is the market for everything in mm -hmm. sex work. Yes. So, you know, sometimes when I'm insecure about myself, you know, I'm getting older, I'm 50, and I'm like, oh, you know, I need those years when I was like nice and fresh and cute in my 20s. But then, uh, you know, somebody offered money, you know, to spend time with me, and I'm like, I still got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I still, yeah. you know, I'm still you know, so it's so empowering and it's, it's a market for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Zaire, um, that, did sex work play a role in your, um, in your overall health, in your well-being, in your mental health? Um, yeah, really I like agree with you and Victoria. Um, yeah, like I feel like it's a part of it why I just like am really pleased hearing just like cis men boggling over me as a trans guy because they're telling me like how good I look and how like how much of a nice body I have so it's just like shit on them low days that it take you to a high